Hey you guys, what we're gonna do today is cover this question. I just gave this for a quiz in Dynamics in my class. So we're gonna go over the solution and see what we get. So for this one, we're gonna be talking about polar coordinates, right? This is the quiz over polar coordinates that I gave. So let's see what we've got. All right, we've got a low flying plane that's traveling at a constant speed of 360 kilometers per hour it's flying in this little holding circle. You can see that little dash circle there. And that circle has a radius of three kilometers. So for the instant shown, we wanna find these six quantities. All right, so the R, R dot, R double dot, and then the theta terms. And those are gonna be relative to the fixed X, Y coordinate system, which you can see right here. And that is said to have an origin at O. Now we're gonna treat the system as two dimensional and we're gonna make sure to include units with our answers. All right, and this problem is out of the Miriam Craig book. All right, so that's where we got that image from and the problem. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Now, first thing I wanna do is let's go ahead and let's convert our velocity over to meters per second, right? It's in kilometers per hour. Usually you wanna use meters per second. So before we do anything else, let's just go ahead and convert that. All right, so V is 360 kilometers per hour. So we're gonna to convert to meters per second. So we know there are a thousand meters per kilometer. And I know for each hour, we got 3,600 seconds. All right, so if you look, that cancels kilometers and then hours cancel here. So that gives me meters per second. And then that's going to end up being 100 meters per second. So now we've got that. And let's see what else we know. All right, so it's not really giving me anything else, right? I have this radius, I have this velocity, that's pretty much all it gives me. So I need to know what else I can do. So first things first, let's go ahead and I'm gonna redraw this picture here and I'm gonna label my R and theta coordinates. All right, so here's X, here's Y. And then at this point right here, we're gonna say the plane is here. So let's say that's plane P. And now I'm gonna label my R and theta axes. All right, so remember R is just an extension of this radial line. Okay, so you can see this is labeled R here. So let's go ahead and draw this out. This is R. And so the radial axis will be positive in that direction. And then theta has to be perpendicular to the R axis. So let's put this as theta. And it shows theta is increasing in this direction. So that's why I drew it in that direction there. So that'll be my positive theta. Okay, and now what I wanna do is I need to look at this velocity, okay? Because if I draw that on here, I'll be able to break it up into the R and theta components. All right, so just like you would do on a free body diagram when you put the force on there, you can break it up into the X, Y components. Same thing here. So here's V right there. And I know this angle here is gonna be theta, right? Because there's that theta. And then next thing I can put on here, let's go ahead before I get carried away here, let's extend this out. So next thing I can put on here is acceleration, okay? Now we're going around in a circle, right? So this is a perfect circle, we're going around. So if I'm looking at this point right here, I'm gonna have an acceleration going in towards point C. So let's call that A, all right? And now with that, let's break this up into components. Okay, so first let's look at V here. We'll look at acceleration in just a second. So for V, let's break this up into our components. I know I'm gonna have a component right here. It's gonna be V sub R. And then I've got this theta component, V sub theta, right there. Okay, so now with that, let's see what we can do with that. 
Okay, so first, let's find R, because I need that. Okay, we don't really need this diagram for R. But let's find R first. So R is going to be the square root of this distance. All right, and I'm gonna put this in meters. So it was 16 kilometers, that's so 16,000 meters. So we'll do the square root of 16,000 squared plus, I need the vertical distance. Well, this is 12, and then this has to be three, right? Because we're going in a circle of radius three. So it's gonna give me 15,000 meters. And if we do that, we get 21,931.7 meters. All right, so that is your R. And now let's go ahead and find theta, because we're at a good point to find theta here. So theta is basically this angle right here. Now, if you look, we've got this triangle, right? And I know this side, and I know the length of this side. So that means I can find theta. So theta then is gonna be the arc tangent of the 15,000 over 16,000. So get, that gives me 43.15 for theta. Now those were easy to find, right? Because I could just look at that picture and tell those. Now I need to go in and find the derivative terms. And that's where this here is gonna come into play. So let's look at r dot. All right, so I know from polar coordinates that r dot is v sub r, right? So we have that. Now, nothing was really given about v sub r, but I do know from this drawing here that v sub r has to be negative v cosine theta, right? It's negative because our component here is going in the negative r direction if this was the vector v, this is the adjacent side, so this is cosine theta. So now I have this relationship here. Now I know what v is, right? That was the 100 meters per second, and I now know what theta is. So that's gonna allow me to find r dot. So we do negative 100 cosine 43.15, and we're gonna get negative 72.96, that's meters per second. Okay, so now we got that. And now let's look at the theta component. Let's see what that will give us. All right, so V theta is R times theta dot. All right, that's just the definition of that theta component for V in polar coordinates. So with that, I know what R is. Right, so R is the 21,000 number we just found. So let's put that. We're gonna multiply it by theta dot. Now, what else could I do here? What do y'all think? Well, remember we have this drawing here. I also know that V theta is V cosine, or not cosine, V sine theta. So let's put that. All right, so now let's fill in our numbers. So we got the 21,931.7 theta dot equals the 100 sine 43.15 degrees. Now, if you look, my only unknown here is theta dot. So now I can find theta dot. And with that, we get 0 0.00312, and this is gonna be radians per second. All right, unless you're told otherwise, you can pretty much always put radians per second for the unit for the theta dot. So now this takes care of r theta, r dot, theta dot. Now I need the second derivative of r and theta. So to get those, we're gonna use the acceleration. So let's look at that. Okay, so remember, that AR is R double dot minus R theta dot squared. It's just the polar coordinate definition for that. And we also know, I'm gonna write this down here, we know that A theta is equal to R double dot or R theta double dot 
plus 2r dot theta dot. So now we know those two equations. Okay, so if you notice, I've got r double dot here, I've got theta double dot here. So I'm going to use these to find those unknowns. Okay, so let's look at this drawing here. So just like we did with velocity, we can do the same thing with acceleration. I can split this up into components. Right, this angle here is theta. So that means I've got this a theta component here, and then I've got a sub r. Now the difference between the velocity and acceleration, if y'all remember we were given the magnitude for velocity, right? It was 100 meters per second. I don't have that for a, so I need to find that first. Okay. So how do you think we're going to do that? Well, we're going to use normal and tangential information. All right, we've got curvilinear motion here. We're going in a circle. So anytime you have curvilinear motion, you could use normal tangential coordinates or polar coordinates. So since I'm going in a circle, I know that uh, my AT is going to be zero. And how do we know that? This is the statement right here, right? Constant speed of 360 kilometers per hour. So your AT has to be zero. So anytime it tells you you're moving with a constant speed, that's telling your, t your tangential acceleration is zero. That has nothing to do with your normal acceleration. Your normal acceleration is a function of the path you're taking, essentially. So now let's look at the normal acceleration. All right, so if we look at the normal acceleration, remember the equation for that is v squared over rho. I know v, and I can find rho. So that's going to give me my a n. So let's go ahead and plug the values in here. So this is going to be 100 squared over rho. And the rho is going to be this distance here, so from here to here. So three kilometers or 3,000 meters, which gives me 3.33 meters per second squared. So now we have these two components of acceleration. So obviously if you were to find the magnitude of your acceleration, you're gonna get the 3.33 meters per second squared. All right, and now we're gonna use this information to find our two components of acceleration, kind of like what we did up here. All right, so let's start with the AR first. Okay, so I know AR, if we look up here, we've got this component, this is in the negative direction, and it's gonna be A sine theta. So now we plug our numbers in. So we're going to have negative 3.33 sine theta. Theta is 31.15. Simplify that, you get negative 2.277. And now this value has to equal this right here. All right, so let's write that out. So negative 2.277 equals the r double dot minus r, we know that value, so let's write it in, times theta dot squared. I know what theta dot is, I just found it, so 0 0.00312 squared. Now our only unknown here is r double dot. So r double dot then is negative 2.064 meters per second squared. All right, so now we've got that. Last thing we need is theta double dot. Notice it's right here. So we're going to find our a theta component. Set it equal to this. We can solve for theta double dot. So our a theta is right here. This is in the negative theta direction. And we have cosine theta. So we're going to have negative a cosine theta. Let's plug in our values here. So negative 3.33, cosine 43.15. Uh, 
and that is negative 2.429. And these are all meters per second squared. All right, I haven't really written this out, but that's what those are. And now we're gonna take this number, set it equal to this expression here. All right, so our negative 2.429, that's gonna equal r theta double dot. Let's plug in our r value. And then we're gonna do plus two times r dot. r dot was right here. And then finally we have theta dot, which is right here. Okay. And now you can solve for theta dot, or theta double dot. And that's going to give you negative 0 0.00009 radians per second squared. All right. And usually you want to carry your units through all your calculations. All right, I was kind of writing on the right hand of the paper. I was going to run out of room, so I didn't include them. But usually you want to include those. Okay, so now that's what we have. So remember what these pieces of information are telling you. You have R, that's your length from basically the origin of this fixed coordinate system out to the plane. R dot is telling you the rate of change of that distance from O to P. And then the R double dot is just the acceleration of that uh, term. And then theta gives you that current angle. The theta dot is your angular velocity, so it gives you the rate of how much that angle is changing, and then finally have that angular acceleration. It tells you the acceleration of the change of that angle. All right, so that's how you go through that one. This one I kind of liked for a quiz because it had the polar coordinate stuff, but you also had to recognize that you had this normal acceleration, and that's how you had to find your magnitude of A. Okay. Hopefully y'all found that one helpful. I will see y'all next time. Y'all have a great day.